Good evening, everybody. This is Robin with another edition of Horror Pop After Midnight. And my guest tonight is Tova and her brother. I don't, I can't pronounce his name really well. I'll have to let him say it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Avishai. Okay. Guys, thank you for coming on. Um, I just checked out your uh, psychological horror film, Blank. Um, I really enjoyed it. I mean, it, it was different, but... Oh, it, it kept me on the edge of my seat. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> well, thank you. Appreciate that. So, um, how did you guys come up with this story? Hmm. Toby, you want to start that or should I? Oh, uh, well, basically, uh, Avish, I had a basic idea or like a log line pitch. Um, and then we just kind of talked about it for a while, just like, what if it was this or what if it was that? And then we kind of um, went into it with um, what characters we want and where we'd want them to go. And then we just wrote the script uh, based on what they would do, like how we how we set out their characters. Yeah, I like how... Yeah, it's... so... Go, go ahead, sorry. sorry. <laughs> no, go ahead. Oh, yeah, I, I was just going to say... Um, so I, I am mostly a writer by trade and Tova is mostly an actor by trade and... Uh, I hadn't directed something in a good long while before we made Blank, and Tova wanted to have a, a role that she can be really proud of. And so part of the pro- part of process was coming up with something that would satisfy both of those creative itches. So let's create something where I can get behind the camera and Tova can stretch her wings and show off what she can really do. And uh, the story just kind of uh, came together through that, through that uh, process. Yeah, Tova, let's talk about your character. Um, it starts off where uh, uh, um, your character's boyfriend moves into your uh, apartment, and um, he knows a, a uh, you know, you have this, like, certain condition, you know, he likes to try to help you, and and um, how you portrayed that, um, oh my gosh, that just really creeped me out, like, how you would, like, when you did your roles, you just, like, snapped in and out, you know, you didn't know... Who was what? And um, when you went into that like blank state, you looked like something that was like possessed over you. You know that um, you were gonna. In, it felt like your character was gonna do something uh, crazy because when you were like in a blank state, you would forget about everything and wouldn't know how to do anything. And I mean, just your facial expressions and you know how you just presented it was just real creepy. Well, thank you so much. Um, basically we, we approached it as like, we, I was not hundred percent sure originally how the blank state would look. Um, and I was doing a little bit, something a little bit more frantic and Avishai was like, no, you're just looking at things like a child looks at things. Mm-hmm. Like it's all new. So when I would, um, snap out, I would just like start off by, um, just kind of like losing focus. And then I would just focus really intently at one thing at a time. And, like, just get, like, joy in whatever thing I was looking at. And that's it. That's what the blank state is. Yeah, and the scene where you were at the basketball court where you went into that to that trance, that that gave me a, a you know, a creepy vibe. And, and it was great how you played off with the other actors in that scene. It's like you guys really did a good, I mean, like a good job. I mean, I was invested, you know, I didn't know what was going to happen next when you were in that, you know, trance on the basketball court. I didn't think, I thought you were going to end up going crazy and going to do something real insane, or you were just going to be sitting there and be like, Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we kind of, um, imply some violence with the, with the rock thing. Yes. To like, Seed what happens later on. I don't want to give it away. Yeah, but that's the beginning of where it gets a little bit more outward, as opposed to maybe she's uh, not just a danger to herself. Yeah, and also the scene where you uh, had your hand on that knife blade, you know, with all the blood dripping, and you were just standing there like it didn't hurt. I was like, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of the things that, that we we talked about was. Because this is such a slow burn horror yeah, movie, it that, is. You know, really kind of takes a while to, to take its dark, its really dark turn, yeah. and actually go into the violence uh, and, and into the threatening situations. It made sense to kind of right off the bat show like this is how dark we're willing to get. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of almost as like a like a uh, 
like just to set your expectations so like holding the knife so then in all the other scenes even if she's not quite doing something to that extent hopefully the audience is thinking i know that she's willing to go that far in this state i know the movie's willing to go that far so maybe it will and just kind of keep them on the edge of their seat until finally when it comes around the violence is hopefully not expected but at least like something that they've been dreading the whole time yeah, I think so too. Um, I totally agree with you. It was a slow burn and, you know, towards the ending, it got really good and started getting really dark and violent. And um, the ending, you know, threw me a curveball, how it ended like that. I was like, I was like, damn. And then, and, 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 and I'm not, you know, I'm not going to ruin it for anybody either. But, um, you know, the final scene uh, Tova did, man, that was just like, you know, it was just straightly, uh, she was just cold, you know, she didn't have a ounce of remorse or anything in her. She just looked at it like if it was a normal day and just went and left the apartment and shut the door. (laughs) Well, yeah, let me just for like, just for a second, hype up my sister because, you know, always knew that, that she had the chops for acting, right? Like, especially like, you know, coming back from from college studying theater it's like aha uh-huh, all right things are snapping together you've got the charisma you've got the talent and then writing the script together with her i knew that she would be a good actor and then one of the questions i had in my head was how will it be like directing my sister on a shoot with a crew and all of that like will there be any potential like frictions or anything like that like you always want to be prepared for anything as a director and no, nope, super easy to direct over. Um, just, con- you know, consummate professional, takes notes like a pro, and um, it just fully commits to, to the to the job. And I hope that some some listeners out there are thinking, damn, I want to hire this person. Oh, well, thank you so much. Uh, I, I will say that part of, <laughs> part of what it is to be, like, an actor is to know that you're not going to be bringing everything that is seen on the screen that you're not just going to come in and be like, this is my show. You know, you can't see yourself. You can't see what the camera sees. You have to let people direct you because you're not, you don't know what you look like and you don't know how it's coming across. So I think that it, it's, if anyone doesn't let directors do their jobs, then they're doing themselves a disservice, honestly. But thank you very much. And on that note, you know, I, I think we were super lucky with uh, Quentin and Najib, the uh, the other two principal actors, who I thought brought their A game and super charismatic and so just good. lovely to nice lovely people. to work with. Yeah. I, <laughs> so Tova, when you uh, did your uh, you know character in the film, because you also went by Tova in the film too, um, how did you mentally prepare yourself to be able to go dark and then um, and then later just snap out of it like being normal? Um, how did you prepare for that? The dark stuff was not the part that I had to be prepared for. I think, if anything, the stuff that was a little bit more stressful was when I was um, annoyed or angry with my partner, Alec, in the the film, or, like, played by Najib, had to be annoyed at him and stay there in between, like, takes, um, because I... And it felt... It was... It felt like I was being annoyed at the actor, but I was trying to stay... Uh, especially on the patio scene, yeah. you know, just sitting there really, really feeling frustrated the whole time. And that was a long scene to do. So that was the most, uh, mentally frustrating was just to be annoyed for so long. So was yeah, he, that was quite a day. Yeah. So was he prepared for you to be annoyed at the certain scenes? Um, um, like when during, uh, takes, did you guys like, you know, separate so you can stay annoyed and then he can be like mentally prepared to act it out or uh how did that work out with him we did not get up from our seats we were sitting there all the lighting is there we're just sitting there and and i don't know how much he could i don't think nobody i don't think obviously i knew whether or not i was annoyed at him for his uh acting choices or whatever or if i was trying to stay in the scene and i was genuinely trying to stay in the scene uh and it's it's an emotional toll because you're just sitting there actively being annoyed at anything that you can think of. Yeah, hey, that- I mean, just, just from the technical side, um, th- this script was 29 pages long and we had five days to shoot it. Uh, with the sixth day, that was just a couple of uh, B-roll shots of like the water, but all of the, uh, the cast and crew were together for five days only. And that meant moving really, really, really fast. So, 
something that we did in advance was we uh, we did some rehearsal with the actors. Uh, but then once you're in the moment and on the day and you have all these different setups, there isn't that much time to get the scene. It, 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 the day, it's, it's amazing how, how quickly a day goes by when you're in the middle of filming. So in that scene where Tova and Najib are sitting at that table and having that fight where they're going from happy to upset, and then we have to take it again from happy to upset and then again from happy to upset um, while also taking into account traffic noises and the rapidly shifting sun and, oh, we have to break for lunch soon. Um, it was really tricky. And so the actors stayed in their places. Um, we instead of, uh, you know, instead of calling cut for a new take to save time, I just kept it rolling and said, OK, now take it back from, uh, you know, Tova who labeled these, you know, like, like pick a line or something where I felt like I liked what he did or I liked what she did, but maybe there's a different way to kind of go about it. Or maybe there's something to sort of push a little bit further to kind of get them to that place where they're a little bit more annoyed, which, uh, you know, they, they definitely, it, it, it definitely got, got, got a little flustery. Um, but it worked. We, we got what I, I, I think it's a, just a beautiful performance from both of them. And, uh, and we made the day. <laughs> Uh, I will say that uh, as far as outside help getting us more in the mood, we did have that. We have a thanks and the credit to the one goddamn cop. Do you want to tell that story? <laughs> yeah, let's hear about. Yeah, let's hear about the so, goddamn cop. <laughs> so here's the story about that one goddamn cop. So again, without without spoiling the story, there's a very emotional climactic scene that takes place near the water at yeah. night. Um, and we had filmed there during the day with no problem. You know, we, we were shooting without permits because who can afford permits? And once night hits, we're out there at the piers at night with the New York City skyline in the background, making our movie look a whole lot more expensive than it is. Um, and we get the very first shot of the scene, which is Najib as Alec entering focus. Mm-hmm. And then a cop shows up and asks, what are you guys doing? And uh, my producer Emmett and I are like, well, it's a student film. <laughs> we're just we're just uh, a bunch of kids just messing around. Don't worry about us. We'll be out of your hair. The cop says, I'm going to be back here in five minutes with reinforcements. You better be gone by then. And just putters off in his little golf cart. And so I look at my director of photography, Max, and I say, OK, we're throwing out the shot list. We This is now a documentary. Shot of him, shot of her. Okay, I, cops up back yet. Let's get the two shot. Cops up back yet. Let's get the wide. You can tell the rest of this story. <laughs> and I hear five minutes, and I think we don't have enough time to get this scene. It's the most important scene of the film. And I start freaking out about how, like, I, I think that, that this film that I care so much about, that we care so much about, won't be able to, you know, have its climax because of this just shitty one moment. Goddamn cop. Because of that one goddamn cop. And so I'm, like, freaking out. And then I'm like, I'm crying. Roll on me. <laughs> so we got a close up. Um, I'm like, I'm not about the cop, I'm freaking out about the situation. <laughs> yeah, and so each each angle in that scene, we only we were only able to t- get one take each because we were moving like the wind. And there was an anxiety that was coursing through every member of the crew and you know both of our actors. We got the whole scene done in 45 minutes, and the cop finally came back, and we were done. And morale just shot up, because that was the end of a long, long day, and we just got that final scene in 45 minutes, boom, done. Um, everybody's really happy after that. So what was the look on the cop's face when he came back when he didn't see you filming? What was he thinking? <laughs> I, uh, I I wish I could even remember. I was in such a fugue state of like, we got it, we're done, let's go. <laughs> Hey, you know, at least you got out of there. At least there was no reinforcements at all. I don't think he would have sent reinforcements. I think it was just a scare tactic. That's that's just my opinion. It was it was some park, you know, park ranger person. I don't know, <laughs> but like they, they, the the cop did come back with another cop. But they, what were they going to do? I mean, <laughs> come on, let's be real. But you know, it, it would have been pretty funny if we all got arrested. But that would have been upsetting because we wouldn't have been able to finish the movie. But you know what? We did it. We got it. I think that scene works like gangbusters and uh it 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 uh I think that that anxiety is uh palpable in the scene. Oh, I think so too. Um 
you know, um, I like talking about your movie. I'm like, you know, I'm trying to not to avoid spoilers. That's why I'm asking certain questions <laughs> because, you know, there's people out there just going, oh, this sounds cool. I got to watch it. And I don't want to be one of those people, you know, you know, you're interviewing somebody and then, you know, like share the whole story. I'm, you know, I'm not trying to do that at all. But um, when does, oh, go ahead, Tova. What'd you say? When does this episode come out? Oh, I'm going to post it later tonight. Okay, because we're, Blank is premiering in New York, it's going to be in New York this, uh, on the 9th at Cinefest. Nice. Right, Abishai? Yeah, it's, we've, we've played at a few festivals, but this is the first one we're playing in a theater in New York. It's New York Cinefest on May 9th at 5 p.m. at Cinema Village. Uh, so, uh, if you're in, if you're in the city, hey, grab a ticket. Hey, There's a lot of one films being shown at the, also, so it's not just for us. It's a really cool festival, it looks like. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Tova, you're also a big cosplayer, too. Um, I was looking at some of your, uh, you know, uh, Instagram and all that. Um, so uh, you must love doing a lot of cosplay. So do you um, take your time and months of the time to perfect that perfect cosplay outfit? Um. Well, I. the truth is that um, I like acting and performing I think, and I, I love, I'm a, I was a theater major and a studio art major, so sometimes I do some crafting in my costumes, but sometimes I just buy them, and sometimes I borrow my costumes, and it's just about being together with people and creating and performing and doing something that you love. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's something that I started doing during the pandemic, and it gave me that outlet, that creative outlet, but as far as big time cosplayers go, where they make things from the, they sew everything together, they make that. That's not exactly what I do, but I do have fun um, being the characters that I love and performing, you know, because my main thing is acting. Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing what you do next because this role you did, um, you really nailed it. In my opinion, you know, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fair judge of character, you know, when I do reviews and interviews, man, I'll, I'll tell you if I either like it or don't like it, but I'm not going to like slam somebody's film, but I'm going to, you know, I'll be one of those ones like, Hey, the lighting was a little bit off or, you know, the editing, but no, oh. yeah, I, that, that, that's, that's the type of critic I am. Um, I did, um, you guys did a good a job in the editing. You can tell, um, you guys, you know, uh, put your heart and soul in the editing of the film, which made it look good too. So. Thank, thank you. I appreciate it. It was a lot of work. <laughs> I bet it was. So, uh, since Tova, you know, has her passion, do you have a geek passion you like or a passion you like when you're not filmmaking? <laughs> I am not a very well rounded person. <laughs> if, if it's if it's if it's not making movies, it's watching movies. Um, I think ab above all else, I'm a screenwriter, okay. and uh, you know, kind of a, as a as a coincidence. Uh, uh, right before we hopped on the Zoom, I just came back from a picket line uh, in New York City, striking with the Writers Guild of America, um, because uh, that's going to be a thing now. So, uh, yeah, that's that's basically where I'm at in, in general. Other than that, you know, watching uh, horror films and science fiction films and reading comic books and whatnot. It's, I'm not, I'm not that well rounded. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you're no fun, but it's all good. Yeah. I do support the writer's guild too. I mean, since, you know, I podcast and, and write reviews and all that. And, I, and I'm, I'm a huge film buff, you know, of all genres besides horror, but you know, I, I want this to, um, I want, I want the writers to get everything what they want, man, because it ruins it for everybody else, you know, because I remember like many years back, they had another writer strike where like certain movies had to stop. Certain uh, TV shows were cut in half of the season because of that crazy writer's <laughs> strike. Yeah, well, every so often you have to remind the, the studios that they actually do need you and that exploitation is not OK. <laughs> I, it is very important that they're striking. I don't think that it's... Um... You know, things are would be stopping for no reason. Um, but you know, uh, I do hope that everyone gets <laughs> gets what they want out of this, and that that it does end up having a good effect on the industry. And it's a shame. It's a shame that they have to strike again. Honestly, what was the last one before two thousand eight? It was like the eighties. The last one before two thousand eight, I think, was in nineteen eighty eight. Yeah, and it was every the single time that the yeah. WGA had to strike. 
it was because they asked for something that was reasonable and the studio said no and then the wga struck and then they got that thing and it turned out that thing was actually extremely important it's it's the reason why writers have health care it's the reason why writers get residuals and uh you know it's the reason why once streaming started and things started being rented out on amazon and itunes and stuff why writers are able to get a percentage of that and now we're looking down the barrel of uh, you know, just the fact that streaming has uh, has been paying not quite as much residuals as the writers deserve, and it's turning into a gig economy. So, striking out there to prevent it from becoming a gig economy. Hey, you know, some I hope, like I said, I hope it works out because you know I'm a I'm a strong supporter of fiscal media. I love my fiscal media, especially my movie wise. You know, I know nowadays everything's focusing more on streaming, and then like like newer movies are coming out it's only on streaming and it's like man i wish it would come on disc so i could just have it for my library you know but yeah, yeah. Um, that seems like we're well, funny story it just from it from a purely economic standpoint because like obviously just from an artistic standpoint mm-hmm. physical media is so good um in large part because you can actually own the thing instead of mm-hmm. it being kind of temporarily leased to you by whatever service you're paying but if you buy physical media the writer makes more money. It's that's just how it works. So uh, good on you. I, I love it, man. If you saw my film collection, you guys, you guys would piss your pants, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, you'd be like, whoa. <laughs> so, um, so what are some of your uh, next projects you're going to be doing? Should I go first? <laughs> So it's 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 actually really funny because I had a whole bunch of writing projects lined up that are now on hold because of uh, the writer's because of all this. So I had a couple of things that were uh, in development that are now in development without my involvement. There were a couple of things that I was circling that would I would be tackling that I will not be tackling. Um, so I'll probably be writing something for myself. And uh, there's a dream short that Tova and I want to do that if I can figure out a way to get the money for it together, um, that would be something lovely to do. But right now, everything's so shut down. (laughs) (laughs) And you, Tova, what are you doing next? I wish I had more to tell you, honestly. I have have a really fun audition on Thursday, uh, but I don't want to... I don't like talking about things before I uh, get them, but... You know, that would be a very cool thing to do. Uh, I've talked to some writers about upcoming projects, but nothing solid. Uh, going to see Guardians of the Galaxy tomorrow with my brother, and I'm getting paid a little bit to talk about it. So that's fun. But acting projects, not 100%. Uh, I cannot give you anything solid right now. <laughs> Whoa, yeah, boo. So in the meantime, it's... Uh... We're hyping up blank and, uh, you know, hopefully getting it to more film festivals and, uh, and yeah, and, you know, holding up, uh, cardboard signs and yelling at executives. <laughs> hey, there's nothing wrong with that. And what Tova said, I'm seeing guardians myself. I'm seeing it Thursday night. So I'm, I'm stoked hey. about that too, man. <laughs> I, I love James Gunn. Okay. And I know a lot of people are hating on him because of his direction of what's he going to do with DC, but you know something, I'm on board. I'm looking forward to seeing it. You know, so you know, screw all the trolls out there. <laughs> Here's the thing about James Gunn that I, you know, I think is really impressive. Like, clearly, he's a very strong storyteller. Like, we know that. He, yeah, he's he's done all of these really creative stories with heart again and again. He's also just a really sure hand at all the other departments. Like, I'm reading reports about, I don't know if you've been following about how uh, Marvel movies have been difficult for the VFX departments lately because of all of the uh, the reshoots and the redesigns and just the sheer amount of work heaped on effects artists that goes above and beyond what they, what they were kind of expected to do without a clear direction. James Gunn's uh, Guardians movies aren't like that, and apparently the effects artists had a really happy time on, on Guardians 3, and that shows that he's a steady hand and knows what he wants, so I'm looking forward to whatever he does, uh, you know, creatively and executive-wise. Oh, me too, and I'm looking forward to for him when he does the Bra- um, Batman Brave and the Bold, where he's going to bring, you know, <laughs> Damian Wayne to the screen. Damian Wayne's my favorite Robin, man, because he's such a badass. <laughs> 
Um, so where can everybody find you guys on social media? If they want to follow what you're going to be doing next. Well, I am on Twitter um, at Avishaiw. That's A V I S H A I W, and I'm on Instagram uh, at Avishai Oddity, and uh, that's basically it for me, Tova. Uh, yeah, and updates on where Blake's going to be or if we're doing anything else. Avishai's Instagram is the place to find it. But if you want to see me little do little costumes and and silly cosplay videos. Then follow me on TikTok, Supernova Tova, and then I also have an Instagram, Supernova Tova. I am on Twitter, but I just use it to talk to my brother. <laughs> <laughs> I like how she says that. That's so priceless. She just pauses for a minute and goes, "Just only to my brother." <laughs> I, hey, you know something? Well, I, <laughs> I, hey, I like that. That's adorable, man. That's cool. You guys are close, man. I love it when siblings and you know, like relatives, work on films together. Um, you know, I think it's it's cool because you know uh, you usually end up making some good uh, some good films, man. Because you guys can you know feel off each other because you guys are like you know related or a cousin or an uncle and all that. Um, I give you props for that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> it was a good experience. I hope it happens again soon. All right, and everybody else, uh, thank you for listening to Horror Pop After Midnight. Have a